It figures to be a wet one, but we'll have baseball for you on MLB Network nonetheless. Tonight, game two of this three-game series between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Chicago Cubs. It's baseball on MLB Network, and it's coming up next. Tyler Chatwood, the California-born right-hander, is on the mound. What do we need to know here, Danny? Well, this guy certainly could be one of those horses for horses kind of guy. Loves pitching at home. Take a look at those home road splits. They're pretty good. Without question, he's more comfortable pitching at home than he is on the road. Up next for the Buckos, Kevin Newman. It's been a really slow start to the season for him, as you can see by the April numbers on your screen. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Grounded up the first baseline. First pitch, 640. Oh, one pitch on its way. Easy fly ball into shallow center field. Giving chase is Elmora, but he won't get there. It falls in. That is second. The left fielder, Adam Frazier. So here's Adam Frazier. As he'll take a look at ball one. Well, guys, as we look at the Cubs coming into play here tonight, they come in off a good victory last time out, but one that was just their second win in their last eight tries. Yeah, Maddie, the first game of any series is super important. You have a chance to set the tone, whether it's three game set or a four game set. You take the first one, you put that other team on their heels. So let's take a peek at the officiating crew in this one. Behind the plate is Kenny Jansen. Hey, the book on Kenny Jansen, D Road, not a very big zone, but he will give you that low pitch below the knees. Yeah, and he's consistent. You're okay with that as an offensive player. He wants to give that pitch below the knees. If this pitcher can execute consistently, you better make the adjustment. And he fouls this one off. He's set. Here's the three and two. Fouled away. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. Hey, three foul balls in a row right here, searching for that put away stuff. And he misses there for ball four, so runners are at first and second now with nobody out. Always tough to issue a free pass, but especially troublesome when you give up a single right before that to start the inning. We'll see if he can figure out a way to wiggle out of this. Standing in, Brian Reynolds. And the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. And this is taken outside for ball one. Really starting to pour now, and the forecast is not showing any signs of a break in the weather. Total agreement, Matt, in particular that pitcher's mound. You know, one of the things you have to really be careful, not just for the position players, but that mound gets awfully slippery and awfully wet when it becomes moist like it is right now so the umpires are going to have to really pay attention to the conditions on the field. Newman at second. Frazier on at first with nobody out. Even count two balls and two strikes. Fastball got him looking as that had two seam action on it. One gone. Some guys with big arms like this they're just chuckers. They just throw the ball as hard as they can and where it ends up isn't that big of a concern but that wasn't the case there. That was a very well pitched fastball right on the corner at the knees. Good luck hitting that one. Almora is there two gone. That is fifth. The third baseman. Colin Moran. So striding forward now, Colin Moran. Batter pitcher matchup numbers with Tyler Chatwood. He's a 300 hitter, three for 10. First pitch coming, here it is. Good fastball down around the knees there, taken for a strike. Moran, a 27 year old, he was a first round pick back in the draft of 2013. Yeah, he has turned himself into a really nice ball player. I wouldn't put him on a superstar level, but you know what? They didn't miss with this pick either. You go into high rounds and you carve out a career the way this guy has, nice pick. Oh, got him looking at the two-seamer, and that'll end it. Pirates strand a couple, and now it'll be the Cubs' turn in a scoreless ball game.
Mitch Keller is the man on the mound for the Pirates in this contest. What's your take on him, Dan? One of the things that jumps out if you look at that stat sheet, a very high whip coming into this start. One of the things he's going to have to do a much better job, keep traffic off the bases, keep the walks down, try to limit the amount of hits. He's had a rough go of that so far this year. Let's see if he can turn it around in this one. Digging in, Chris Bryant. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Dero, Dan, we look at this Pirates ball club as they enter play here tonight. It was another loss for them last time out, and that makes them 2-8 and eight over their last 10 games. Yeah, guys, yesterday's loss was a tough one. A one-run loss. Hopefully they were able to just acclimate themselves to the city. And that'll just sneak past his outstretched arm, a base hit. He was able to spit on that first slider right there, guys, but he didn't let the second one go. Able to execute and drive the baseball. And as the second baseman, Jason Kipnis, took an 0 for 4 in the victory last night. As a look, now the pitch. And he turns on this one and yanks it foul and back out of play. It's over, but low, it's a ball and a strike. Back up the middle. And Kipnis is going to reach on a base hit. First two batters find a sweet spot, barrel up perfectly. These fans have to be excited. Middle of the order coming to the plate now. After those first two ABs, this could be a laser show. Here's Javier Baez as the first pitch to him is swung on and missed for strike one. He'll enter play with an average of 311, six home runs, and 16 RBIs. A ball and a strike. Checks his swing here, but he does so in time. It has to be a challenge pitch coming up here. He probably doesn't want to flirt with loading the bases. He's set, and the 2-1 pitch. And it's two balls and two strikes now. He appears to be having some issues with pitch command to start the game. He's dealing with two guys on, and that last pitch looked like a big mistake in that location. Right down the middle, but he got away with it. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and that's the first out. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny, we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days. What makes it so effective? I think, Matt, what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. Do you think you can drive it? But it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball. Wilson Contreras comes on with one away as he looks at a ball. It's 1-0. From the belt, the pitch. Got to find a way to execute either a good fastball down the way or flip something off speed for a strike. You cannot miss over the harder plate in these situations. The hitter is on high alert. Started to go around, but it's ruled strike one anyway. Almost got him to go around, but instead it's ball three. First and second now, one man out. Slap hard the opposite way. Polanco is back in plenty of time to put this away, however, and there are two gone. So that'll bring up Jason Hayward. A couple of hits for him in four trips to the plate last night. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. The fastball here is he'll take a look at ball one. One and oh. There's not too many umpires in the game that are going to ring that first strike right there. That was borderline up even though it was in the zone. High 
high in the air out to center field. Reynolds has it for out number three. An inning in the books tonight, still scoreless here on MLB Network. Second inning coming up, and Heidi Watney has an update for us on the weather forecast. Well, Matt, the grounds crew members that I talked to prior to the game said the weather we're experiencing right now is expected to move on as the game progresses. They said they'll put extra effort into keeping the field dry until this rain dies down. But despite it being a little wet at the moment, we should get this one in uninterrupted. Let's hope, Maybe Heidi, for all of our sake, that Mother Nature takes that front and passes it through without an incident. First pitch of the at bat. A swinging strike, and now it's 0 2. Offered at that breaking ball below the zone, and that's a tough one to spit on. But the key is recognizing it coming out of the pitcher's hand earlier and making sure that it goes up before it comes down. More likely to be a hanger when that's the case. So here's how the Chicago Cubs are positioned defensively. Let's take a look at catcher Wilson Contreras. This guy has got one of the best arms in the game. Think Gary Sanchez, but in the National League. Nobody wants to attempt stealing bags on this guy and brings a powerful bat to the lineup. Stepping in now, Kevin Kramer. And he takes ball one. Enters play here at 279. No home runs just yet, and with just the lone RBI. Here's a swing and a miss, one and one. No score here as we play inning number two. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Now a swing and a miss, he struck him out, and it's two up, two down to start the second. Hey, I'm not sure what he was sitting on right there. He might have been sitting on an off-speed pitch, but instead he gets the fastball way late. Had no chance to put that ball in play. Jacob Stallings will be the next hitter. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. The numbers on the year, 272. No home runs as of yet, nine driven in. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. Two out, nobody on. Tries to change up on him there, but it's a ball, two and one. He's fallen behind now, three and one. Just behind the fastball there, two strikes now. You know, on a cold night like this, I think you're going to see him continue to elevate pitches and let these guys just fly out to the warning track. Full count here. Here comes the pitch. Grounded weakly down the line toward third. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Pirates. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Last half of the second set to go. Set to get his evening at the plate started. Kyle Schwarber. And it's been a real struggle for him with the bat so far this year. Looking to get things turned around in a hurry. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And that's cut on and missed 0 1. Schwarber is a big threat in a matchup like this. He's got a ton of pop against right handed pitching. Yeah, I think because of his approach. He's not a dead pull guy. You want to try and. There's a swing and a drive, and everybody's just going to sit back and watch that one fly. A no doubt home run. A 
solo home run for Kyle Schwarber. Home run number nine on the year, and the Cubs are on the board first, one to nothing. Hey, listen, there's an old adage in baseball that solo home runs won't kill you. This is one of the top hitters in that lineup, so a home run, a solo home run right here, it's not the end of the world. And that'll bring Anthony Rizzo to the plate. And you see that average below the dreaded Mendoza line. First delivery to him on the way. Base is empty here with nobody out. Fouled off. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. And he lays off the pitch down and away. Ball two. At the knees for a called strike, and it's back to even at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, a crucial count for both pitcher and hitter. So, Dan, what was your approach on the mound in that count? Do you still pitch for the strikeout here? Action pitch right here, 2-2. Two, two. The last thing you want to do is to fall behind the count 3-2. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Everybody's different coming out of spring training. Some guys get off to tour and start. Some guys struggle. This is one that struggled, but maybe that single gets him going. Here's Albert Almora next. He's back in the starting lineup for this one after sitting out last night's game. First pitch of the at bat. Now a big fastball, and he's well behind it with the swing. Good job there to jump ahead with the fastball. If he's going to get back on track out there, the fastball is what he's going to start to need locating first and foremost. Then he can work his other pitches off of that. Count now a ball and a strike. Base hit into right center. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. In now, Tyler Chatwood as he would look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. It's not easy to continue pounding the strike zone when you've given up three consecutive hits, but he has to trust that getting the ball down in the zone will get him an out. The 1 0. Runs a bit inside for a ball. His pitch count is getting up there in the inning now. He needs to get this frame over with sooner than later, so forcing contact and getting the defense involved is probably the best thing he can do. Now a swing, and he gets him to pop it up, but this will land untouched. And he popped him up. Newman ranging into the outfield. He gets there to make the play for the first out of the inning. Now back. The first take a look at the Pittsburgh Pirates defensive lineup. And let's take a look at outfielder Gregory Polanco. Can play all spots in the outfield from center to both corners with a cannon arm and the ability to go in the gap. Digging in next will be Chris Bryant. Lays off 1 and 0. Looked like a breaking ball that time, but it never came back down. Hey, always a good idea to take a couple of pitches when you're facing a young arm like this one. And now he's put himself in a real good hitter's count. 3 and 0 now. Well, nothing can make you question yourself on that mound more than three straight balls to a guy you know that you should go right after. Sometimes you just lose the strike zone and you don't know why. Line drive to center field. And that's in there. Base hit. A 
now, and with two men on third, they're going to get an out out of this. Standing in now, Jason Kipnis, as he lines it hard to the right side, but out of play. Winging strike, and now it's 0 and 2. 88 on a changeup? I remember when an 88 mile an hour fastball wasn't all that bad. Man, the game's changing. A ball and two strikes to Kipnis. The set, and the 1 2. Pretty good breaking ball to lay off of right there. If I'm pitching, I might think this guy might be sitting on something off speed. Two and two. Here it is. Three, two. Wow, this is a pretty good at bat right here from down in the count 0 and 2 to work the count back to 3 and 2. And he's seen a lot of pitches too. Ready with the payoff pitch. And a fastball called strike three, and the side is retired. Some of our nation's young minds and future leaders here in attendance. Yikes. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. Top of the third set to get underway. Now in the box, the Mitch Keller. The pitcher, Mitch Keller. First pitch on its way. Clearly off with his timing on that one, a swinging strike. If he's able to locate that two seamer down at the knees, he's going to get a ton of swing and miss and a ton of ground balls today. One ball, one strike to count. Pirates pitcher at the plate with a one and two count. And good take that time on a low breaking ball. Two and two now. You certainly know he's not trying to work around the pitcher. But sometimes the hardest thing to do is to throw a strike to a guy that you know won't swing the bat. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. And with one away, let's give you a look at the standings in the NL Central entering play as you see where these two teams sit in relation to one another. Ready for another chance? Kevin Newman, a base hit in his first trip. Now here it comes. And a good pitch on the inside corner for strike one. Man, this guy's in a good groove right now. Seven straight retired. He's locked in. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Left fielder giving chase. He gets there and makes the play for the second out of the inning. Now batting. The left fielder. Adam. Riding in once again, Adam Frazier. He drew a walk his first time up. Now the pitch. First pitch fastball off the plate there, and it's ball one. Not close. It's 2 and 0. Bases are empty here with two men out. Hard on the ground towards short. 
And that finds its way through for a base hit. Hey, you know what? You could slowly the start to see that batter ten. leak out over the plate. That was three straight pitches on the outer half, and he was able to dive out there and get an opposite field single. Nice job. At the plate, Ryan Reynolds, 1 and 0 oh the count. From the stretch, this is hit the other way out toward left field. Schwarber is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. So no runs on a hit here, no errors, one man left on. We'll head now to the home half of inning number three. Cubs lead it one to nothing. Settling in now, Javier Baez he was a strikeout victim in his first try. Yeah, and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one. And we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. No balls in one strike. The wind up and the 0 1. Gets the fastball by him here and he's in control 0 and 2. With the way this guy's throwing on the mound you cannot be chasing. You have to set your sights a little bit lower and control the strike zone to one and two now. This one's down to third. And a good throw gets him one gun. Next to hit will be Wilson Contreras. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. First pitch on its way. Good deception on the slider there as he's way out in front. Just off the plate and high, ball one. Now a swing and a miss, and he's behind one and two. Two and two to the Cubs catcher. Two two it's three. taken on the inside corner strike three well no preferential treatment there sometimes we see great hitters have their calls go their way on close pitches but not this time I think that was actually a good take but on two strikes anything that close can go either way and here's a fastball called for strike one. Now a fastball off the plate away, a ball and a strike. The 1-1. One, one. Takes a pass and misses, that's strike two. One and two. Counts even to Hayward, two balls and two strikes. Wow, that was a close pitch on one and two. The count's now on two and two, but boy, that one very easily could have been called strike three. Really close pitch. Just staying alive, putting together a really good at bat here. Another try at 2 2. Skied into straightaway right. Polanco has a read on it. And that's the third out. Cubs are down in order, but they lead it 1 to nothing. Riding in, Josh Bell. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. Now here's the pitch. Off the plate, ball one. This guy's been throwing the ball great so far, but he's going to be tested here. Four, five, and six coming up this part of the lineup. A count of one and one to the Pirates' first baseman. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. Waiting on it is Almora. One away. Now batter. So the with the fly out there coming on the fastball, seems like an appropriate end. time to check out our pitch speed comparison for these two starters. And boy, you can see it there. 
couple of power arms out there as both of these guys are working in the high 90s. First offering on its way. Colin Moran will stand in for the second time now as he looks at a called strike. It's nothing in one. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Line drive to center field. But sadly for him, this will head straight to the center fielder as he puts it away without much trouble for the second out. Well, we've mentioned the conditions aren't ideal with the rain coming down, and that can make every play a little bit of an adventure. You really have to concentrate, and he did there to haul it down. Now at the plate, Gregory Polanco. He popped out in his first trip. And he throws the fastball by him here, 0-1. Hey, if this guy's able to execute that two seamer down and away consistently, he's going to get a lot of swing and misses. He's going to get a lot of weak contact. He might even get a few knots on some people's shins. A ball and a strike now. And he misses two and one. Sometimes it can be difficult for a pitcher. You're facing a guy that's not known to be a big stick in the lineup. Sometimes the toughest thing is to be aggressive and throw strikes. Three balls and a strike to Gregory Polanco. The three and one pitch. A swing and a miss, and that'll fill the count at three and two. He was able to sneak that fastball by him on three and one, so, so now we've got a battle on our hands. Lifted out towards straightaway center field. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the Pirates. They're down one nothing. Welcome back to the north side of Chicago. Back here at Wrigley Field as we check in with Heidi. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Cubs to discuss his thoughts on his lineup so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. Yes, they've only scored one run, but he said we they've done a great the job Cubs. of forcing the pitch count up, no and he thinks that. that's going to lead to more oh, offense boy. for them as this game goes on. Okay, thank you, Huddy. And right into the shift. Uh, this gets foul. It's 0-1. Now he spins on one here and drives it to deep right field. Back goes Polanco to the track. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Had a long way to go to make that running catch, and here it is again with the show track numbers. Took a great angle at it, showed nice closing speed, and ended up running close to 110 feet to finally bring it in. No doubt in efforts his teammates are appreciative of. So one away here in the Chicago fourth and that brings in Anthony Rizzo. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Ah, and he pulled the string a bit too sharply there on a curveball as it's down around the shoe tops. One and one the count of the Cubs first baseman. on the ground and right at the shifted infielders and quickly there are two away not a lot you can do with that pitch that fastball just ate him up inside and gets the soft grounder for the out ready to deliver here's the first pitch you'll start him here with a changeup, but it's taken for ball one after watching that one go by and a ball being called, you can rest assured he knows he's not getting away with another one of those. I guarantee you he's going to be aggressive on this next pitch. A two ball, no strike count to the Cubs center fielder. Hey. Two balls and a strike. One run, six hits. No errors so far for the Cubbies. Starts to go around here, but it doesn't matter. This is strike two anyway. Borderline pitch right there. But as a low ball hitter, you can live with that as long as the umpire doesn't give him north as well. Into the windup. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Liner toward right center. And a dive, but it rattles in and out of the glove. 
Hey, they always say hitting in the eight hole in the National League is one of the toughest jobs to do. You're hitting in front of the pitcher. Not necessarily going to get pitched like an eight hole hitter. You want to get out of that spot? Guess what? Newsflash. Be better. Because basically every other hitter in the lineup is hitting in front of you except the pitcher. Swing and a little blooper to center. Here's Reynolds moving forward on it. He can't get there as it falls in. And that I think his only hope is to try to get out of this fourth inning and maybe try to regroup for the fifth. But this is eight hits he's given up already, so he might even have trouble doing that. Here's Chris Bryant now as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. Two hits and two trips for him thus far. The set and the 1 0. Starts to go around, but the home plate umpire says he held up ball two. Here's the 2 0. Chopped to third, and he'll just step on third, and the inning is over. Cubs strand a couple. But they're on top one to nothing. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Well, Matt, I talked with Pittsburgh's manager during the inning break about the Pirates' offensive production to this point. And flat out, he told me they just need to put better swings on the ball right now. He said they're searching for ways to drive the ball with some authority because it's just not happening for them today. They haven't gotten an extra base hit yet, so it's been a real struggle getting guys into scoring position. But the key, he said, is not to panic. Sometimes you just have to fight through the downturns and keep your focus and energy high. Thank you, Heidi. Tries to go the other way as this is in the air to left field. Schwarber has it and it's a quick out number one. Up next to Pittsburgh. The Jacob Stallings. So coming to the plate, Jacob Stallings. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. First pitch on its way. And he starts the number eight hitter with a strike. Nothing in one. And that's down into left center for a base hit. Dan, how hard is it to massage your way through such a deep lineup? Not I mean, bad. even the eight, nine hole hitters are solid no. big league players. You no know, more. These days, you're not seeing a lot of defensive specialists in the infield or outfield. If you're in that starting lineup these days, there's a pretty good job you can swing the bat. Into the box, Mitch Keller. And they'll try to stay out of the double play here as he lays this one down. And you can't ask for much more out of a pitcher than that. The sacrifice works to perfection. So the batting order turns over now and set to go Kevin Newman as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Fastball in there for a called strike. No runs, three hits, and no errors so far for the Pirates. A 1-1 count to the Pirates' leadoff hitter. And did he go around? No, he did not. Ball two. The count now at two and two. to hold the lead here's the delivery swing and a miss at one in the dirt and the throw to first ends the inning one left for Pittsburgh they trail this one one to nothing 
Stephen Braun, the lefty standing now six foot even, five takes five over the pitching duties here. Stephen Braun. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Now at the plate, Jason Kipnis. He's working on a one for two game so far. First pitch of the at bat. Fly ball out to straightaway right. Under this one is Polanco, and he's got it for the first out. The batter number nine. Ready for another shot now. Javier Baez. Third trip to the plate for him here. He struck out and grounded out in his first two tries. Out in front of it, strike one. The wind up and the 0 1. Started to go around there, but he holds up ball one. Name of the game out on the mound is to disrupt timing of the hitters in the box. He certainly got this guy on the defensive. Two balls and a strike to Javi Baez. Yeah, and if you get a guy flailing at a pitch like that, heck, you're going to go out there and throw that same pitch until he proves he can lay off of it. Sent on the ground out to second. In time to first, and there are two away. So now with two out in the base is empty is Wilson Contreras. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. There's a fastball well off the plate for a ball. Two out, nobody on. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. That was a tempting pitch to swing at right there. A big power guy like this really wants something that he can elevate and drive out of the ballpark. Line drive, and that's a base hit in the center field. So the bottom of the inning is still alive after the two out base hit. Nice piece of hitting right there. Didn't try and do too much. Fastball, middle cut, places it right back where it came from. So it's a runner at first with two gone. And that'll bring up the multi gold glover, Jason Hayward. From the belt, the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he's behind 0 1. Yeah, that pitch is the equalizer. Left on left slider, down and away. He can spot it up when he needs to. That pitch is almost unhittable. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the 0-2 pitch. High in the air out to center field. Reynolds has it for out number three. Cubs strand one, but they're up one to nothing. And that'll bring in Adam Frazier. Leading off the pitch. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Down the first baseline. But a foul ball here, 0 and 1. Crowds him a bit with a fastball there, and it's to 1 and 1. And there's ball two now. Well, those were a couple of close pitches right there in the inner part of the zone. Hitters will tell you. Pitches in that location are tough to do anything with. Two and two to Adam Frazier. Two two pitches fouled away. And the pitch. And another foul ball. Line towards center field. And that's a base hit, so the pressure's on to open up the inning. So a ringing single here to center field makes it two hits for him on the night. And as we check out the Bucks' leaders in that category, you can see he currently sits in third place on the ball club in that department. So now to the plate, Brian Reynolds. 
batting left handed here as he takes a look at strike one. A runner at first with no outs here. He pulls this one into right. And that'll get down out there near the wall. And they've really got something going here. Runners at second and third to start the inning. Finally, a little something for them to get excited about. Yeah, a rally can begin with the single swing of the bat, and this might be their chance right here. They've struggled to produce a lot of runs, but there he is at second base. A shot to the outfield scores him. Then who knows what kind of roll they can get on. Got to take it one good at bat at a time. So that'll bring up Josh Bell as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball 1-0. Well, they've yet to hang a number on the scoreboard, but it looks like they've got a great opportunity from the breakthrough. Going to be pretty demoralizing if they can't. And this one's too far inside, ball two. It's a lot easier to hit when you're putting yourself in good hitters' counts. This guy's done a great job not swinging at pitchers' pitches, and when he's getting the ball in his own, he's getting the barrel to it. He's been hot lately. Gets the sign. Here comes the 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. This is swung on and missed, and boy, they took care of a key man there. One away. It's been a really rough day for this lineup. There's really no other way to say it. Not a lot of good scoring opportunities, and when they've had them, like right now, it's just been an uphill battle for them to make anything positive happen. Stepping in now, Colin Moran as he takes a fastball off the plate for a ball 1 and 0. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Here's a weakly hit fly ball off to the left side. And that will fall as he comes through. It's a base hit. And the run will score from third as that ties things at 1. Hey, we're in the middle of this one already, d row They finally score a run, and they've had a tough time scoring some runs. Yeah, after taking it on the chin yesterday, it's nice to finally break through. Maybe this gives the offense the confidence it needs. Here's Gregory Polanco. As he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. In the dirt and block behind the plate. Good job to get to that quickly, though, and the count will even at one. Now this is on the ground to first. We'll see if they can get two. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Really good job of putting the ball in play right there. Even though it wasn't a base hit, it does bring the go-ahead run for his team. Digging in once again, Kevin Kramer. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. Liner towards second. That gets down. He's got himself a base hit. He's in time, and he's cut down at the plate as they team up to gun him down. So two runs on four hits here. No errors, and one man left on. Six, seventh, and eighth place hitters due up in the bottom of inning number six. Pittsburgh leads this one 2 to 1. Kyle Schwarber will stand in here hoping to duplicate what he did back in the second inning. We flash you back to take another look at his solo home run that helped get this offense rolling. Here comes the first pitch. Good movement there, and he's not even close. One and one. Hey, I can't have one of my best left-handed power bats fishing for balls off the plate. And it's one and two. One and two. Misses badly. It's ball two. And 
That's low, so a good eye there as he works the count back full. Waiting next is Anthony Rizzo. And that one misses, so the leadoff man will head down to first on ball four to start the bottom of the sixth. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. Anthony Rizzo stands in now. One for two on his line so far in the game. First pitch coming, here it is. Not close with the off-speed pitch taken for a ball. Two and oh now. Sometimes you gotta be aggressive offensively, but sometimes you just let the pitcher dig his own grave. Patience and discipline seem to be the way to go right here. Low scoring game thus far. Two to one here in the sixth. Pulled toward right center field. On the move is Polanco. And he tracks it down. Nice play for the first down. Now back. Michael Feliz takes the mound now, and it appears he's being brought in to face the right-handed batter who waits next. Yeah, you usually don't hear the term righty specialist very often, but that's kind of how they're using him here, Matt. Most hitters have a harder time against pitchers of the same handedness, so we'll see if this move pans out. Now, time asked for and granted by the home plate umpire. And now still not ready just yet as he steps out for a second time here. Ian Happ will be summoned off the bench here as he'll pinch hit with the runner at first and one gone in the Number inning. Eight. Now here's a slider that can't quite get back to the outside corner. It's ball one. And he comes in as a player to watch out for, hitting well over 300 on the season. Line to the right side. In there, a base hit. Now back, the pitcher, Tyler. Good. Victor Caratini will look to provide a little punch off the bench as he'll hit with runners at the corners and one out in the inning. High and deep to right center. Reynolds is on the move for it. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. The relay throw on to first, and they get the double play. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one man left aboard. We're through six full. It's the Pirates two and the Cubs one. Victor Caratini is up off the bench as he is in as a defensive replacement. Now playing center field, number eight, Ian Happ. Rowan Wick is on to pitch from the bullpen number now to start three. inning number seven. Digging in and looking for more, Jacob Stallings. He's one for two in the ball game. First offering on its way. A ball and no strikes. Now it's two and oh. Two and oh. on the way. 
That's a tough curveball right there to stay into as a lefty hitter. That ball looks like it's almost going to hit you, and it breaks over the inside half of the plate. Skied into straightaway right. Therefore, it is Hayward now, one away. Now batter, the pitcher, Michael Felice. Jose Osuna will move into the on-deck circle now to try to get something started here with one gone in the inning. Jose Osuna. Liner towards second. That gets down, and he's got himself a base hit. Boy, it's so frustrating as a pitcher. You make a quality pitch on the inside half of the plate right there. Try to bust him in, D-Row, and he fights it off the other way. Yeah, you tip your hat to the pitcher right there. He executed his pitch, but nice job by the offensive player. Fighting. It doesn't matter what it looks like. A knock's a knock. Into the box now. Kevin Newman. Swing and a liner. Foul. We're in the seventh inning now of a pitcher's duel. Two to one our score. Behind 0 and 2 now. Another one sent foul. Here's another 0 2. Oh, and there's the good curveball as he set down on strikes for the second time here tonight. Up next for Pittsburgh. So stepping in, Adam Frazier. He reached on a single last time and later wound up scoring. First pitch coming, here it is. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. In there, and it's 0 2 now. Boy, this is one of those ABs you like to hit the rewind button on. Put himself in a tough spot now, hitting with two strikes. Hit back up the middle. There's Baez on to Kipnis at second, and the inning is over. Pirates leave one. They lead it two to one. Keone Kella gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seven. Leading off the inning, Chris Bryant, as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. This thing's far from over, even though we're moving into the back end of this game. Only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. They love the confidence in that pitch right there, going right after one of the better hitters on this team. Not afraid to execute. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. And he looks at a ball, one and two. Now it looks like a right-hander's up and throwing in the Pittsburgh bullpen. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. Stepping in, Jason Kipnis. He's working on a one for three thus far. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Tough to do much with that one. A swing and a miss. And it's fouled away. One out, nobody on. Can't find the zone there as he lays off the breaking ball. Well, I'll tell you, he's not hitting over 300 by luck. He really knows the strike zone and his own strengths. That last take is a great example. Outside and low that time. Now it's two balls and two strikes. Well, he kind of got caught chasing the first two pitches out of the strike zone. But I think he's caught on to their game a little bit right now. Two tough pitches that he took with two strikes. And now the count is two and two. And this will miss down low in the dirt, so he's worked it full now at three and two. Wow, from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2 in that last pitch on 2 and 2, 
wasn't even close. He had this guy in the ropes, but now he let him right back into this at bat. Here comes the payoff pitch. Weak grounder down the first baseline. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. And he lays off ball four. So now the potential tying run here is aboard late in the game. That was a great battle right there. He tried to get in the chase, but he laid off some really tough pitches and got a walk. Got to tip the cap to the batter that time. First pitch on its way. Curveball bounces, and that gets by to the backstop. And not what they were hoping for as that moves the possible tying run into scoring position. And I think that's the case of the pitcher being a little too preoccupied with the speed at first. He lost focus on making the pitch and throws an absolute scud. The irony hit high and deep out to straightaway left. Going back is the left fielder. Gone! A two-run shot that gives them the lead. Two runs on the board after the home run by Javi Baez. Seven home runs for him on the year now, and it gives the Cubbies a 3-2 lead. Hey, that's the price you pay right there when you try and sneak a fastball past this guy. Power hitter, and every power hitter in the league knows you got to start with the numero uno, number one, man. you got to get on the heater and adjust to everything else, and he did just that. Kyle Pritt takes the ball from the pen as he'll try to get the final two outs of this seventh frame. Now that the pitcher will say. Here's the young catcher, Wilson Contreras. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. Popped him up. And he'll put this one away in foul territory for the second out. Now batting, right fielder, Jason. Digging in to try it again, Jason Hayward. It was a fly out for him in his last trip. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Here's the 0 1 pitch. I got a ball, one strike. Ball and two strikes now. Looked like he was cheating a heater right there. A little bit too far out in front. Got to find a way to keep his hands back. The one two. He's at the knees and called strike three. Two for the Cubs in the inning on the strength of this two run home run. Seven complete here tonight. And Chicago's taking a three two lead. New inning set to get underway. Stepping into the box, Ryan Reynolds. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Now the skipper's on his way out toward the home plate area, and I believe that means we're going to have a double switch here. Dan Winkler will come on to pitch here, and he'll move into the number five spot in the lineup now on the double switch. Steven Souza will also come on now as he'll move into the pitcher's number nine hold in the order here on that double switch. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Rounded slowly to the left side. Scooped up. Throw on to first in time, so the leadoff man is set down to open up inning number eight. The first baseman, number 55, Josh. Josh Bell the next to hit. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. And that misses inside 1 and 0. That's a good pitch to lay off right there that cutter inside and that is a real tough pitch for hitters to lay off of and a lot of times if you do swing at that cutter in you're going to end up with some firewood in a broken bat. 
the 2 0. Swung on and driven to right, and no doubt about it. Looking up is Souza. That one is out of here. This game is tied. A solo shot here to straightaway right field, and we are tied again. Certainly a tape measure shot there as we take a look at it with our show track technology. 111 miles an hour was the exit velocity, so it comes as no surprise that it carried as far as it did. Now batting the third baseman, calling Moran. Late now, Colin Moran. As he'll take a look at his strike on the outside corner, it's 0 and 1. It was a single for him in his last at bat. Swing and a miss, and he's in trouble now. 0 and 2. 0 2 count. You could do just about anything you want right now. Up, down, in, out, hard, soft. Good time to be a pitcher. And he fouls this one off. Bases are empty. One man out. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate, and he'll have another shot at it here. Nope. And he missed with it. It's one and two. This is a fun guy to watch when he's up there, really battles. Doesn't take any pitches off. He's a grinder. Always seems to make it difficult on the opposing pitcher. Count still at one and two. Lifted the other way out to left center. Left fielder giving chase. He makes the running play. Two down. Up next for Pittsburgh, the right fielder, Gregory Polanco. So two gone here in the Pittsburgh eight. And the left handed hitting outfielder, Gregory Polanco, bats next. And that's in there for strike one. Very rarely does a pitcher like this leave one in a location like that. That's a pitch right there he'd like to have back. He'd love to swing at that one again. Hit out towards second. Kipnis is there on the first, and this will remain a tie ball game as the inning is over. But the Pirates are able to draw level on this solo home run. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth, and we are all tied at three apiece. You Nick Birdie is on to pitch out of now the bullpen in the bottom the half of the eighth. Number 57. Bottom of inning number eight set to go. Coming to the plate now, Kyle Schwarber. Perhaps he can drive another one out of the park just like he did back in the second. Here's the first pitch to him. And a good idea to hold off on that swing. It's ball one. Fastball misses away here. It's 2 0. Too tight with that one. 3 0. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. High in the air out to center field. Reynolds is under it to make the play on the first down. So one gone here in the Chicago eighth, and into bat next, the left-handed hitting first baseman Anthony Rizzo. Now the pitch. 
Birdie comes at hitters with a good hard fastball, one that's certainly fun to watch. He's a throwback to kind of guys that he likes his fastball. It's a good fastball, not the best fastball in the game, and he's not afraid to throw it. And you know what else, Matty V? He goes right at the hitters. From the windup, the 2-0 pitch. Down low, and the plot thickens here, 3-0. and Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Went about halfway there, but it's a called strike regardless. Right side, but it's well fouled. One out, nobody on. Not surprisingly here, this is on the ground to the right side. And there's out number two. So striding in, Ian Happ, one for one after a single this first time up. Now here's the pitch. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Reynolds has it for out number three. Three up, three down for the Cubs. No change in the score. It's three to three. Now to the plate, Kevin Kramer. He's working on a one for three thus far. Jeremy Jeffress will be on the mound to start the ninth inning, and his job will be keeping the ball game tied until the bottom half. Number 24. First pitch on its way. Oh, that's a tough call for Blue right there. Either way you call it, somebody doesn't like it. But hey, that's the life of an umpire. Can't sit back long enough, and the count evens up at one and one. The pitch. Fouled off again, and now he's in a one and two hole. Now the pitch. Fastball right back to the mound. And he'll flip on to first to record the out. Good pitch right there to run the two-seamer in on his hands and bunch him up. And an easy ground ball as a result. From the stretch, Jacob Stallings is in now as he watches a pitch for ball one. And he won't bite at that one either. It's 2-0. This at bat sets up really good right here, right? Hasn't seen a fastball yet, but now he gets to count at two balls and no strikes. He has to be looking for a fastball right here. The 2 1. Bases are empty, one man out. Sent on the ground out to second, taken in by Kipnis. And he'll whip this one over to first, and he gets his man for the second out. Now batting. Nope. Eric Gonzalez will get the call to pinch hit here, as we'll see what he can do with two out and the base is empty. Eric Gonzalez. Big swing and a miss at the knuckle curve, strike one. And this is sliced foul into the stands and right out of play. And he strikes him out on a good pitch. So one run can win it as we head to the bottom of the inning. One, two, three, go the Pirates. Still tied three to three. Richard Rodriguez enters to do the pitching, and best-case scenario for him is to push this one into extra innings. Bottom of the inning now, standing in, Steven Souza. He's carrying a batting average of just over 300, so clearly he's been a productive player with the bat in his hand so far. And that's inside for a ball, 1-0. Fouled away. 
He's got that certainly timed up now. I'd be shocked if the pitcher goes to the well three times in a row with off speed. Now the one and one pitch. Two balls, one strike. Okay. Hit hard down the left field line. But this is foul near the seats. Into the windup. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first down. That swing tells me he was really trying to get a pitch out front and rip it down the line, but that wasn't a great pitch to do it on. It's really not the best two strike approach either. And the pitch. First pitch here is below the knees, but he gets him to chase it, and it's 0 and 1. One ball and one strike to the Cubs' leadoff batter. One out, nobody on. Fouled off. the ground and right at the shifted infielders. He's got it. Throw not in time and he beats it out for his third hit tonight. Boy when things are good How things are going it? really good. How about a swinging fun infield single right there for his third knock of the game d -Row. Yeah he has to be feeling frisky right now. He's had two great at bats and then this one he's 100 percent on fire getting an infield single for his third knock of the game. That's awesome. Here's the first pitch. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Polanco has a read on it. Two down. Now batting. Now batting. Javier Baez. He's got a chance to end this one and send these fans home happy if he can get a ball deep enough into the gap. Going back to that last AB, that was the express. That was an upper 90s fastball that he turned around. So I think with this guy, you might want to try to incorporate some more off speed pitches. And now this is thrown wildly, just getting it into the infield. And they're going to hold him to a single here as they do a nice job of getting it back in quickly. So digging in with a chance to win it here, Wilson Contreras, as he'll hit with the go-ahead run at third and two away. Here's the first pitch. Now a hard liner. Foul. Big spot here. Possible winning run at third, two down. There's a swing and a high drive into left center field. Reynolds is on the move for it. Ball game! So a three-run shot to left center. And with one swing of the bat, this ball game is over. Everybody wants to be a hero and hit one of those walk-off game-winning home runs. So you know right now when he's getting mobbed by his teammates, he has to feel awfully good. some damage offensively in this one enough to get the win and this man led the charge he's our tops player of the game yeah he really made it happen with the bat in this one you see here two hits and one was a long ball so he has to feel pretty good about what he did here and 
tonight. Tonight's comes to an end. Six to three the final. Chicago came through when it mattered in the ninth on the way to the win. Jeremy Jeffress claims the win out of the pen his first. So that's a wrap for us in this one. Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, Matt Vaskersian. We all thank you for watching Major League Baseball on MLB Network. See you next time.